Hi fifth graders, it's Mrs. Navi coming to you from my kitchen table again, ready for a science lab on insulators and conductors. Now Miss Barkley and I have been working on putting together this lab for you. You should have already made your predictions about what items you think will conduct electricity and what items will insulate so that the electrons cannot move through the circuit. So I've gathered all the items she listed on her form. You've made a prediction. Now let's try and see which of these items conduct and which don't. So I've built a circuit like we saw in last week's video, although it's a little bit more simple. So I have a battery connected to two alligator clip wires and I'm going to complete this circuit onto a light bulb holder. The light bulb is in there and you can see that the circuit's complete, the light bulb is lit. So we'll be using this circuit to test each of these materials to see if they are conductor or insulator. Our first object is a paper clip. Now this should have been an easy prediction, made of metal. We used this in the lab when we lit our sparky circuit. So what did you predict? Let's see if you were right. I'm gonna hook it in and it lights the bulb, therefore it is a conductor. Our second item was masking tape. This is actually painter's tape, that's why it's green, that's what I had at my house, but it's the same as masking tape. So let's give it a go and it does not conduct electricity. That means it's an insulator. Now let's check, we said masking tape. I'm just interested to see what happens with scotch tape. So we're gonna try another type of tape. It is in my fingers even though you can't see it. Oh, sorry. Now, it did not light the bulb. It is also an insulator. Next on our list is a penny, and I actually brought out four different kinds of coins. I wanted to take you back to third grade when we talked about coins, whether they were magnetic or not. We learned that they are not magnetic, but let's see if they are actually a conductor. So here goes the penny. Yes, it does allow for the flow of electrons. So we're gonna try a nickel, positive, Dime, yes, and a quarter also allows the flows of, flow of electrons, so therefore it is a conductor. Our last two items to test on our list were two types of dough. So if you looked carefully at the ingredients of the dough A and dough B, you noticed that dough A contains salt and dough B contains sugar. So let's see how that makes a difference in their conductivity. So I've made a circuit out of dough A, the one that contains salt. Let's see if I place it carefully, if it conducts. And yes, it does. The salt is a conductor. Let's see what happens with dough B, mostly comprised of sugar. and our bulb is not lighting. So sugar must not be a conductor like salt. I've lined up all the objects that we tested today by whether they were an insulator, front row, or a conductor, back row. And as you can see, most of the objects that are conducting the electricity and moving the electrons through them are metals and then the dough that was made of salt. And think about your body. Your body has salts in it as well as water. Now salt in your body makes you a conductor. Water by itself is not a conductor, it's an insulator. But if water has a lot of materials in it, minerals and salts, it's going to be a conductor. I've really enjoyed making this video for you today. I sure do miss you fifth graders. Hope you're all doing well. See you soon.